Hello everyone, Christina Werner here with a video for concordanineth.com. Today I have the great pleasure of showing you a brand new product to the Concord and Ninth line, which is pattern paper. This is their very first pattern paper pack. It's called Garden Party. And I'm gonna be showing you a little bit of the papers today. We're gonna make three projects and I'll kind of be talking about the paper throughout. Before we get into that, I want to show you this pack. I'm opening it up for the first time where I get to see and feel it with my own fingers, and it's just absolutely beautiful. So this particular collection has 18 sheets of pattern paper. You get two, two sheets of each design, so there are nine designs total, and they are single-sided, so you don't have to worry about sacrificing one of your favorite patterns that might be on the back of another favorite pattern. It's kind of great. The papers are eight and a half by 11. So if you're a card maker, you can cut them right down and you can have a full size card front. The thing that's really, really great about these pattern papers is they match and coordinate with the Concord and Ninth cardstock and ink. So you've got six colors in this collection. You've got evergreen, clover, sea glass, stardust, sorbet, and grapefruit. And they pair beautifully with all of these pattern papers. The papers cut and score really well. Um, they cut with die cuts really well. You'll see that a little bit later. And they're printed locally in Utah near the Concord and Ninth office. So this is a really great collection of papers. So I know you're thinking, all right, Christina, let's get into it. Let's actually see these in use. So for my very first card, we're gonna keep it super simple. And I wanted to show you how you don't have to do a lot to make your card look amazing when you use these pattern papers. I'm gonna cut this design down to an A2 size of paper. So it fits on the front of my card. Just cut it in half and then half again. And the thing that's great about especially these larger patterns is that you still have enough of the pattern when you cut it down that you can really see what it is. So I'm adhering it down to my card front. I'm putting some adhesive right on the edge and then pressing that down onto a white card base. Now the only thing I'm really going to do on this card is just add a grading. So throughout this video, you're going to be seeing some other products that are, that are being released at the same time as the pattern paper. So I'm going to be using the brand new Just Saying dies. I love these. They're nice and big and substantial. They're perfect for making a card where the greeting is the main focal point. I'm using the one that says Just a Note, and I'm cutting out the words in Sorbet, and I'm cutting out the outline kind of shadow layer in white. And I'm going to stack these right on top of each other and adhere them together. I love that the words are all stuck together. They stay in one piece. So it's super easy to make sure that you have your letters all in the right position. I'm going to be putting a, a liquid adhesive on the back, a liquid glue. I like to use a liquid glue when I'm layering up die cuts like this because it gives me a little bit of time to wiggle it around and get it in just the right position. Now, if you don't have a liquid adhesive, it's totally okay. You just might want to be a little bit more careful when you place your word die right on that shadow layer. I'm adhering the dot right above the J, and then I just put some foam adhesive on the back. Super, super simple. You could definitely keep this card just as is with just the two layers on the grating and then the pattern paper, but I was really craving a little bit of shine. So I grabbed some Ranger glossy accents and I coated the sorbet letters on my grating. This is definitely an extra step that you don't have to take, but it does give it just a little bit of a different texture. When I'm using glossy accents like this, I just have to remind myself, go really slow. That's how you prevent getting lots of bubbles in the application, and you can just have a better application. You can also like take off any extra with the sharp end of some scissors or a craft pick. So here it is after it's dried, dried for about an hour, and you can see that gloss and shine. It's just so beautiful. All right, we're gonna go on to the second card. And on this card, we're going to be using the Rain or Shine stamp set as well as the coordinating dies, which actually have a lot of other images on it too. But we're on this card, we're focusing on using the pattern paper and the colors on the pattern paper as inspiration for our stamping. I'm gonna do some multicolor stamping with a technique that I lovingly call ink cube painting. 
It's really, really fun. In fact, the Concord and Ninth Ink Cubes are perfect for this particular technique. They have a bunch of other stamps that work well with this technique. So I'm going to start out with the six colors from the paper. And I'm actually going to be stamping with all six of these on this one image. You heard that right, all six of them. I'm going to put a piece of paper right underneath the door of my Misty just so I can see where my colors are being applied. And I'm starting with sea glass and I'm just pouncing it on a couple different areas. I don't want to cover the whole thing. So I'm stamping that down onto some white cardstock. And then immediately I'm putting that cardstock back in the corner of my Misty because I want to make sure that every time I stamp, I have that paper right back in that corner. Taking some Stardust ink now, and just applying it to a few different places. We're trying to get kind of a mixture of colors. They can be overlapping. They can kind of mix a little bit, but we don't want one color to be overwhelming. I'm speeding up the video uh, footage here so we can get moving here. But you can see as I start to add the other colors, it's filling in those gaps. And then you can start to read the greeting on the inside of the umbrella. Such a fun way to use this kind of solid umbrella stamp with the words on it. So I'm coming back and adding some more of the dark green. This is, uh, I think, I think this is clover at this point. So I'm adding the clover on, um, and then we're going to be going in with evergreen. Or actually, that was evergreen. Now we're going back to clover. I'm just making sure I fill in all those gaps around the letters. So here's our very last stamp. And we have this really eclectic, colorful image using the colors from the pattern paper. Now, because I use the same ink colors, it's going to match any pattern paper I use, which is brilliant. So now I'm going to break out the dies. I'm going to use that coordinating shape that goes right over that umbrella. And I'm also going to uh, die cut out and like the handle for the umbrella. I stamped one and I thought I was going to use that one, but then I decided to go ahead and just cut out the umbrella handle out of some sorbet cardstock. There are also these other little elements in the die set to decorate your umbrella. This particular piece here adds like a trim on the bottom of the umbrella. You can put it on the front of the umbrella so it has a full edge, or like I'm going to be showing you here, I'm applying this on the back of the umbrella and it's going to just have those little pom-poms on the tips of the umbrella. Super fun. This is definitely not a rain umbrella. This is a sun umbrella because sunny days are ahead. So I'm adhering that on with a little bit of that glue. And now we have those cute little pom-poms on the bottom. To finish off the umbrella, I put adhesive on the front of that handle. And then I'll just place the umbrella on top and kind of hold it with my fingers together until it's nice and uh, adhered and strong. So like I said, this matches the pattern paper um, that, you know, that I use as inspiration. So I'm going to use a sheet of this sea glass pattern and I'm putting it directly down onto a white card base. And then I'm simply going to put some foam adhesive on the back of my umbrella and adhere that right in the center of the card. So at this point, I thought my card was finished. I thought, oh, that's super cute. But you know what? There are little tiny heart dies in that die set. So I thought I would go ahead and cut out some more sorbet hearts. So I cut out each heart twice, and then I adhered them directly onto my card. I had some on the umbrella and some beneath the umbrella, and that just brings in a little bit more of that color. So super simple card, but a really, really fun technique with all those inks that coordinate with the pattern paper. I also decided to coat the hearts in that same glossy accents, uh, just because I can't help myself. I really wanted some shine on this. So we're gonna add that shine, and then I set it aside to dry. Make sure you lay it flat to dry as well. So here it is after it's dry, those colors really, really pop. Okay, for this last card for the video, I'm really going to be playing with the pattern paper a ton. In this release, Concord and Ninth has three different quilt top dies. There's Chevron, Geometric, and Pinwheel. I'm going to be using the Geometric quilt top dies today um, just because I thought it looked really, really fun and I can get some different shapes. So I'm going to be cutting out a bunch of pattern paper to be used on this Geometric quilt die or I should say quilt top die. And the thing that's brilliant about these is that you get all of the little pieces to, you know, 
customize your quilt, but you also have the base layer of the quilt that's going to serve as a guide so that you can adhere all of your little tiny bits of paper in the correct spots. Now you can get super creative and make your own patterns, but for this video and for this card, I thought I would show you how it was intended. So I'm going to cut out a bunch of different pattern papers. I just, I think I selected four or five patterns and I just cut all of the small pieces using all of the patterns. I also grabbed a couple of pieces of solid cardstock. I thought I might use both, but I actually ended up only using some of that uh, sorbet color. So here I wanted to show you that you can move these around on your pattern to make sure that you get different areas. I wanted to make sure I got those big flowers. So that's why I kind of had my dies kind of skewed and in a creative formation on this pattern paper. So I did use the sorbet, like I said here. So I'll cut those out and set those aside. And then you can just have fun and start assembling. So when I put together patterns like this, whether I'm a uh, paper piecing or even when I've done a quilt, yes, I have made an actual quilt in the past. It's been a long time, but I have made one. I like to make sure that I don't have any of the same pattern uh, side by side or too much of one color in one area. So I'm really making sure that I'm selecting different colors from this pattern paper to fill in the different areas. And then when it comes to adhering, I make sure to put a little bit of glue on each corner and then just a little squiggle in the middle. And once again, this liquid glue is great for kind of wiggling that paper around to make sure it's in the right spot. So as you can see, the guide on kind of the base layer of the quilt top die works wonderfully to make sure that you get everything in the right spot. And because that all of the pieces are cut out using dies, everything is going to line up perfectly. So I adhered everything in the center, and then I'm going to add these little triangles to the outer edges. Now I use the example on the back of the die packaging as inspiration for where I was going to place everything. But you could definitely do a bunch of different formations. You could use a different color for your base, for your quilt top. You can do a lot of fun different things. I think around Christmas time, having a gold base layer would be gorgeous. Then with some Christmas papers on top. Cutting off the excess from my pattern paper that's hanging off the edge of my card. And then I have the basic design of my card complete. Now I just have to worry about a greeting. So for the greeting, there, there are a couple different products in this release that have to do with sewing, which is perfect since there are these quilt top dies. I have the perfect person in mind to receive this card. She loves sewing, she loves quilting, and this will be a great card for her. I'm taking some vellum and I'm going to be uh, stamping the really large You're So Sweet greeting onto it. So I've got some Versamark ink, and I'm going to stamp that down right down onto the vellum and make sure I get a really good impression. Just pressing down. And then I'm going to add some gold embossing powder on top. I think gold is a really great accent color for these pattern papers. Gold or silver, really. I think both will look beautiful. I'll hit that with my heat tool until all of the powder is melted and has a metallic finish. Now I want this greeting to stand out on top of all that quilting. So I'm actually going to double up the layer of vellum. I'm doing that by using a Xyron um, adhesive machine, but you could definitely use any adhesive you have. The only thing you want to make sure of is that you have that adhesive covering the entire back of your vellum piece. So if you're using a glue, maybe use your fingertips and smear that glue over the entire surface area. That's essentially what that Xyron did for my vellum. It just it made uh, adhesive all on the back of my vellum piece. I'm going to peel off this uh, release paper on the top and then I can pick up my vellum piece. It essentially made it a big sticker. I'm gonna stick it down onto the remainder of my vellum sheet right here. And this is just going to double up the vellum and give it a little bit more um, of a calm area right around the grating so it's easier to read on top of that quilt. You could also use some word dies or something like that. The uh, just saying word dies would be beautiful on top of a quilt top designed like this as well. So I'm cutting around, fussy cutting around, just getting a nice border on that. And then to adhere it to my card, I actually used a clear 
3D dimensional adhesive. I've had it for years. I'm at down to the very last bit of it, as you can see. And it does show through the vellum a tiny bit, but it's not so bad. It's not distracting. So I thought it was the perfect way to adhere this to my quilt top die uh, card and also have it kind of popped up a little bit. So that is the finished card. You can see how pretty it is with that gold embossing, how it just shines in the light. So here are all three cards right on top of all that pattern paper. You can get the pattern paper and all the stamps and dies that I've used today over at concordandnines.com. They have everything there for you in this latest release. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you check out the pattern paper and use it with your inks and your card stocks. It goes together so, so well. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in another video very soon.